I'm Pierce Alexander Lilholt, the captain of Floaty Boat. That's right. And uh, my last video got cut off where I was going to show you the uh, board holders for the companionway boards. So I got this flashlight. These go right behind where where your legs are. So two on each side. Get a better view of it there. Oh. So they go and they just get stored right behind your behind your feet. I don't know if that was even a good angle. I couldn't really see what I was showing you guys. Let's see if you can see it better from this side. Okay, so there you go. You can see that there's a case of water, cushion, that's the wood. Then that light colored wood is essentially just like a little pocket. And it actually is pretty awesome. I'm surprised it's not on more. Um, surprised this is just. I just lean this up against the laptop. It's a great camera angle. Never used this before. The table's down right now because I was uh, using this to do some work. It's a very professional camera angle. Wow. Floaty boat has never looked so professional. I think this calls for a bun lamp. Probably wondering what's a bun lamp. I've got this bag here and it's full of lamps. These are all for on deck, so yeah, that's nice. I feel like that just brightened up the uh, the whole show. So I, I have these bun lamps, this one, this style. These just kind of sit on the um, on the seat next to somebody got this style which these go in a cup holder so I have those ram mount cup holders out there and this one I like to put on the uh, I like to put this one on the uh, table that sits next to the grill that's probably the brightest one I also keep my batteries in that bag just because some of these these ones actually run off a of battery the bun lamps and the other one are rechargeable I'd say if you're out on a boat and you have a power inverter, like I do, I have two, I have three technically. I don't use the other one though because it's really loud. Um, I'd say it sounds like you want USB rechargeable, but I'm telling you, it's nice to say, okay, this is dying, let me use rechargeable batteries and then have a battery recharging station attached to your inverter so whenever you're running your power you can see okay I've got this one which I just stuck to the wall all those batteries are actually good let me just let me take these yeah I popped all those out so okay so so all these batteries I've got six batteries here charged up and just put them in my pouch full of rechargeable batteries got them from one and like I was gonna use I think this one whoa that one still works I think one of these I left out and said hey this needs to like these batteries are dead whoa. so I can just take them Now you do need, see how that turned red up there? That means that these need to be charged. You do need two batteries in there to make a circuit. So that one won't charge until there's at least another one single AAA or AA in there. It needs to make the circuit. So that one, as far as I know, is not charging, but I've got already, I've got batteries here that are already recharged. And like this lamp here, I could just take this, put three batteries in it, 
And this is back in action. Didn't have to bring it back, didn't have to do anything like that. And I clip all my lamps over here on this big carabiner. There's actually a boom brake on that. Which I don't know about this boom brake thing. I'm not sure if it's a safety feature or a hazard. I'm on the fence about the boom brake. I might not be using it properly, but it... I don't care how good you are. I mean, jibes happen and that boom will swing. Well, boom! I know you've all had that happen if you sailed before and that's super dangerous like that could if it's on a big boat whoa you're going overboard if it's on a boat like this i mean the boom clears my head but doesn't clear tony's or some of the other people who are tall you're, you're gonna catch something that's way longer than a baseball bat that's swinging way harder so so let me show you this uh Let me show you some of the uh, the things that I use when I'm out on the mooring here. And that's because, well, it's hard to harvest power or it's hard to not only harvest power, but it's also hard to be comfortable. So power and comfort kind of go hand in hand. So let me show you some of the stuff that... Because once I got to a marina, I was like, oh, you could basically use anything from a house. Whoa, that's a game changer because I've always been pretty much out on a mooring. So I'm in the middle of the Delaware River, more or less, not the middle, middle, but pretty far out there. I'm on the outer row of the mooring field. And that flashlight, here's a, here's a light hat. So one of the main things, I don't know if you see that, the solar panel. I'm sure if you've watched these videos before, you've seen the solar panel before. That's awesome. One of the other things that's awesome is, you see that um, propane tank? That powers the grill, which is really nice. Now, this little fridge is a new addition that can cool stuff down. Before, I had no way to... to keep things cooler than I bring the, what's what's in the cooler which is usually a cooler shock pack which will typically last a few days with the AO cooler and and that's awesome but well after that if you stay out longer than that then you can't get anything cold so that runs off the batteries so I have batteries here down here I've got these are 35 uh, amp hour batteries. I've got three of those. I've got this big AGM, which is typically like, that's like your boat size. That's what it's running off of right now. And I've got a power inverter over here. I've got another one behind that little wall that's behind those boxes. That's under, that's under the deck. So I'm not going to take you there right now, but I will take you halfway there. So also under the deck is, and this was new this year. This was something that allowed me to run the air conditioner, which as you can see, there's just a big old window air conditioner like you'd find in a house that I made this uh, hatch uh, companionway hatch with a hole cut out of it. Okay, so in here, I've got a generator that I can just take out, so. So this thing, this actually covers the uh, speaker, but this generator, I mean, there it is. I can pick it up with one hand, but then again, I'm crazy strong. So, that's why I have a couple fuel cans here. These aren't just for refueling, they're also for uh, refueling the, uh, the engine, they're also for uh, refueling the generator. So that's one of the ways. Okay, let me go inside here and show you some of the other ways I'm staying comfy out here. Whoa. 
Okay. Uh, another way is um, with uh, heat. So, two things I use heat for. One, I'm not going back up there, but you know there's a grill. <laughs> okay, so that grill, oh, bum lamp. That grill's awesome. And, you know what? Let's get another, get another lamp out. This lamp is making me look like I'm missing my tooth here. I'm gonna turn this out and see. Yeah, I'll leave it with the pirate tooth. <laughs> it's like casting a shadow. Missing my tooth. Har matey. <laughs> okay, so the other way that I'm that I'm using the heat is okay so the grill and that one I use the propane out there or which I already showed you that or I could use one of the little screw on green propane tanks now what I typically use that for I use one right here because I still like this to be portable this is a little buddy heater this is the little fireplace that heats up the cap so basically all I do is I whoa, to do this it's already warm enough down here but I'll just for show so oh, pilot okay so you click that and you see the little pilot lights on I tilt that too much and then you just turn on low boom the flame goes on and then you turn it off because that's really hot <laughs> and then this thing I tuck right under the the step. Water is another thing. So before, so I have a, a case of water because I did run out of water the other day. I recently set up the fresh water tank. So this sink right here, that's operational now. And there's a big tank. I think it holds 20 or 30 gallons under the deck that's right out there. So again, that's pretty cool. Okay. Last thing, and this is, I'd say if, if you really need power and you could do a lot with power and you have a battery, one of the coolest things is this, this solar panel right here. I don't even know if I can open this in here, it's so big. So I just, I just clip this up onto, so this is as thin as that. And this has four panels in it, so, I mean, these panels are big. There's one, two, three, four. And this, I can then face towards the sun, and, when, and then I just clip it onto the battery, and then when I'm done, I just tuck it right back over here. Under the ukulele. And honestly, that thing's 120 watts. That thing generates an enormous amount of power. So I put that out in combination with the solar panel that's always there. The solar panel that's always there is charging the main batteries that I have that are under the deck that I really don't ever really want to go there and get to them. The, the batteries that are in here, and this is another thing, after I had the generator, I was able to go and charge batteries up. Okay, so you can see here, here's a battery charging station. I've got three battery chargers attached to the wall here. There's two NOCO 10s and one NOCO 5. I had the NOCO 5 first, and then I was like, that fixed a battery that I totally drained where other chargers wouldn't even do anything to it. It just wouldn't recognize. So I'm all about the NOCO chargers. They're awesome. And um, I'm able to run that generator and essentially... Um, by running the generator, I can I can recharge three batteries at once. So one of them is always the big guy right here. And then I try to connect, try to swap them around with the other three. So those are all basically a backup for this. They used to be the main batteries, and I'd swap the three of them out. And that's what powers the V-Birth and the sound system in here, a few of the light strands that are in here. But 
that's what does a great deal of what's in the cabin here. And then, all in all, I mean, all in all, oh, there's always this too. Poor potty. Oh yeah, gotta have a gotta have a potty. So that's the that's a Thetford. It's uh, got a little water tank in the top, and you, it's got a little electric flusher. You just put some batteries in there. It has a little bit of water that comes out. It is not a composting toilet. It's a chemical toilet, so you do need to mix some of that blue stuff in, like you'd find in a normal porta potty. But it does close up real tight. Can't smell anything from it, so that's pretty good. And when it comes time to dump that, you just dump it in a like a land toilet. You don't just dump it overboard or bury it in the woods or anything, because there is some crazy bio. I don't know, enzyme, bioagent thing that you, it's sewage. You don't just go dumping it around. <laughs> it's not environmentally friendly. So, um, so I think that's everything in terms of power and, you know, working with, working with what you can harvest. So if you have a generator, well, then you could run that indefinitely, depending on how much fuel you have. If you don't have the generator, and that is a, you really got to be out on a boat a lot to justify needing a generator. Some boats do have built-in um, uh, generators that when they're running their engine, they can uh, power stuff in their boat. My engine does not do that. There are even outboards that will charge um, engines up that I understand. So... That'd be a consideration. If, if I were getting a second outboard, I would look for that because you could always run your engine to... I mean, you're always going to be running if you're if you're under power, too. So that would charge it up. But you could always just motor around for a little bit. And, yeah, I'd say solar. The panel off the back is good. It keeps this thing well-charged. But I'd say, then again, it's not as strong as the TP solar that I have right there and that one it really has so many advantages one it takes up no room out there and almost no room in here the footprint on it is tiny I just slide it in kind of like I slide this table next to me I mean I didn't even properly put it away but I just slide it uh, where is it Here we go. So I just slip this. I think you can see that. Yeah, you see this in my hand. I just literally slip this in between the cushion. I mean, it's so flat against the wall. It, I would say it takes up literally no room. I wasn't using that space for anything. So the amount of power it generates, and you can go and you can move it and face it towards the sun. Lots of advantages for that. So that'd be my main uh, advice. I'll try to, I'll put a link to that TP solar one in there. And I'll try to put a link to some of the other stuff that I've showed you in this video because, hey, it's been working for me. And if it hasn't been working, I'd let you know. And if it doesn't work for you and something else works better, definitely tell me because, I mean, I feel like when you're in a 23-foot boat, when things work better, that's better. Oh yeah!